apologies for the Twitch app crashing on the Xbox. How's the fight? I noticed that my stream went down on the side. Hello there, Hunter. Made adjustments as necessary. <laughs> I should probably just stream from a cap car like I used to, but the Xbox is so convenient. And I don't have to worry about the PC. GPU not being up to par. Overheating, whatever. Hey, Kipgar, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for those tech issues. So, it won't let me go to Sanctuary, so I assume that I'm at Sanctuary. Is that right? I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe I am at Sanctuary, but then why would the waypoint point there? <laughs> My point's confusing. Oh, that's what it is, because I wasn't exactly highlighting where I needed to fast travel. I'm silly. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> You're so sweet. Hi, I want some apple cider. damage Nova when the shield breaks, but capacity really is pretty low. Alright, that's the DLC mission. I'm just going right ahead to the main mission area. For now. I do have the DLCs, of course. I just want to make sure I'm level 13 before I play them. Level am I, anyways? Oh, I am. Am I level 13? Main mission is level 13. <laughs> I haven't been keeping track. Either way, I just need to find Lilith. Somewhere here. <coughs> She's way up on an upper floor. Just gotta find my way out of this little area. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, I liked, I was mentioning it before, some of those weird non-wrestling areas. I liked when at WCW at one time did a pay-per-view where they had like a pool around them. <laughs> Switched it around instead, Boogeyman theme. <laughs> yeah, when they had the little pool around the ring, that was awesome. See them <laughs> wrestlers would toss each other into the pool and silly stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff.
Go see what you can find, Bolt Hunter. Rock and Mick Foley had that empty arena match back in the day. Which is kind of funny because it kind of forecast the empty arena <laughs> events. I don't think anybody would have ever imagined that they would have full events with an empty arena back then. And that was during the Super Bowl halftime when the Rock and Mick Foley faced off. Empty arena match. Of course, that time Hardcore Holly and Al Snow had a hardcore match that went out in the Mississippi so River. Olivia? That was St. Valentine's Day Massacre. I think it was 97 or 98. We'll help Reese when we can. Right Maybe now, 99. we've got to get to Athena's. My memory's not good. <laughs> we should see what she knows. Claptrap, type broadcast to Athena's. Call sign Sapphire. And comes open! Really? <gasps> what are you... Bad time? Yeah, kinda. Uh, I'm guessing you're calling for the same reason Malawan's trashing our monastery? Well, I don't have it, but I know where it is. Hey, get here soon or you'll miss all the fun. And by fun, I mean getting bulldozed by corporate murder squads. Maya. She can hold her own until we get there. She's a siren and as badass as they come. Hell, maybe we can convince her to join us. It would be helpful to have another siren on board. Besides you, Lilith, I was still counting you. Oh, more ladies on Admiral Claptrap's love ship. Everyone's looking at Claptrap. Oh yeah, that was pretty Booyah! fun. Set a course for Athena. And I remember when they brought back ECW and everybody booed the WWE wrestlers because they were so pro ECW. When they had JBL and other WWE wrestlers come out, Fans went nuts and were just, they were screaming obscenities at him. <laughs> F you, JBL, and things like that. It was just, it was crazy. That was, that was fun. Anytime they brought back ECW was good. I liked when TNA brought back ECW as well for that pay-per-view. I'm they running did. short on syringes. It would appear that the idiotic primate inhabitants of this vessel have been stealing my syringes and using them for who knows what. I'm running low, and I need them back. I remember one of the matches when TNA brought back ECW had a move with a toy lightsaber stabbing in between the arm and the, <laughs> and the rib cage. Old school. <laughs> Old school kid fighting kind of move. I thought it was really cool, though. It was actually really well received. <laughs> I watched a bit of TNA as well. Not as much as I watched WWE, but I watched it too. Like that. Attracting friends and allies and well wishers. <laughs> well, hard to argue with that one. <laughs> Claptrap does need a good kicking, but then again, so many things do. I didn't buy all their pay per views back in the day for sure. The TNA pay per views, that is. I bought all the WWE pay per views back in the day. <laughs> back when they were 50 or $60 a piece. Nowadays, we just get them all for $10 a month. It's, it's easy to take that for granted, because I remember back in the day when I used to have to beg my parents and be like, I want to get this pay-per-view. It's only like 50 or $60. <laughs> I'd always, yeah, the first one that I got was the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus McMahon in the steel cage. That was the first pay-per-view they let me get. It was quite exciting for me. I brought my friends over and everything, and we all watched it. 
And then from then on, every month when they had a pay-per-view, I begged my parents and got to watch it again. Except for when we went on vacation to South Carolina and Myrtle Beach. I did miss that particular pay-per-view. It was the one where Jesse Ventura was uh, refereeing. I think it was a triple threat match. SummerSlam, if I remember correctly, 98, 99. But yeah, sadly missed that, that one. But otherwise, got to see the rest of them. I was sad about missing that one, but I was on vacation. Got stung by a man of war. So I guess I had bigger things on my mind, too. <laughs> At the time, I was crying in the hotel lobby and everything, because it hurt a lot, having a stingray get to my leg. I spent the rest of that vacation at the arcades playing games and also at the pool back in the ocean. went to one of the tour shows and met some wrestlers. Sorry, I've rambled so long. I should have addressed that much sooner. That's awesome. You're here. Right in time for a fight. <laughs> I'm Maya. Come find me in the market quarter. A battalion of Malawan troops are trampling my home, and I'd appreciate some help. You know, killing them. No refund. <sighs> I've got bullets with your name on it. Well me, that came up wrong. Now I don't show the smirks to just As much as the six-sided ring when they had that was gimmicky, I really liked that. <laughs> I kind of missed that. It'll be nice to have someone else here besides my apprentice who hasn't taken an oath of non-violence. Speaking of which. <laughs> I was sad when they did away with it. It's excited ring that is. Oh, you're super sweet. I've also read a ton of wrestling autobiographies over the years. My favorite being McFoley's. Yeah, multiple. Shawn Michaels was also pretty good. Heartbreak and Triumph, the Shine Michaels story. Sean Michaels would talk about working in a small independent wrestling company back in the day where people didn't really know how to put the moves together in such a way that it was cohesive in a match. Books, yeah. Though sometimes they would make documentaries that share the same name like the Stone Cold Truth was a book and then they made a documentary out of it that had the exact same name WWE was known to do that Lion's Tail Awesome. I collect all the wrestling autobiographies. They're all really good. Even the Ric Flair one where he bashed McFoley back then and they turned it to a storyline. <laughs> that was kind of good. I always like when they turned real life into a storyline to kind of blur the lines. 
Edge. Hardy, I think it was Matt Hardy. Yeah. Over the whole Lita thing, that was... <laughs> There's some crazy stuff back then. When you think about the fact that the live sex show with Edge and Lita, that there was actually a view from the UK where they, they got nudity from that. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason she had to be naked under there. It's, it's wrestling, right? Um, WWE did some crazy stuff. <laughs> Sometimes I think it was just Vince McMahon's way of just <laughs> fulfilling his every fantasy. When he spanked Trish Stratus in front of Stephanie McMahon, I, 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 that was definitely a weird fantasy he was fulfilling. I don't, I don't even want to know. Uh, but anybody would want to spank Trish Stratus, but why he wanted to do it in front of his family, no idea. <laughs> or in the middle of the rest of Whatever. WWE did some crazy stuff back in the day, for sure. <laughs> Move out! <laughs> oh yes, Nifty. That, that storyline was terrible. <laughs> it was not my fault. <laughs> Yeah, that was... <laughs> that was an uncomfortable storyline. It was not the kind of storyline where if you were bringing in like a non-wrestling fan and you were saying, here's the good stuff from wrestling, you know, you wouldn't show them that. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't use that to get them into it. You'd be like showing them the Viagra on a pole match from WCW and saying, this is what wrestling's about. <laughs> that would not be a good representation. I always hated that whenever you're trying to show like a non-wrestling fan a wrestling match and it's always like there's always some really gimmicky storyline that you're trying to get them to ignore and just pay attention to athleticism. <laughs> but especially when it's something like the Snitsky thing. Snitsky, that whole thing was embarrassing. I imagine Vince Russo had to be behind that. <laughs> Even if he wasn't, I still blame him for it. I <laughs> 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 red hot chili pepper. <laughs> You're so sweet. Bang the gong. Everybody should have these little intros in real life. <laughs> so you're kicking ass with the Raiders. Guess Lilith had to replace me eventually. Ready for some more action? Malin wants full of teched out nerds. Let's kick him in the dick. Thought so. Follow me. We'll meet up with my apprentice. If she hasn't gotten herself killed. The fragment sealed inside an Iridian anchor hold. The whole monastery was built around it by monks who think it's sacred. Maybe it is, but right now it's attracting the wrong kind of attention. Their favorite of mine too. Pandora when to Ric Flair quote unquote retired and they played Snow. It's a very touching balance. moment. Until he came out of retirement like <laughs> a few weeks later in TNA and it was like, oh, there went that moment. <laughs> it was still a good song. Ugh, that's Tront. Real pain in my ass. 
So far, he hasn't been able to get into the anchor hold, but let's not rely on his incompetence. Now, look, monks, I know you think I'm doing this because I enjoy terrorizing you, but it's actually to make my big brother proud of me. He's a general, you see, and I got a huge inferiority complex about it. So if I have to burn down your entire monastery to impress him, then so be it, you know? Uh, you get it, right? You get it. Secure the square. Once it's safe, we'll ring the bell of peace so the monks can let us through. Can't stand up to us! So many. Time for the scrap. I really like parallel universe. I like other side. <clears throat> Obviously, everybody loves under the bridge. But parallel universe is like a, I guess maybe a B side to some people, but I totally love that one. <laughs> Scar tissue was okay, but I guess it kind of got worn out back in the day. But still reminds me of good '90s memories. Uh, <laughs> Snow, I guess, would be my very favorite. Such a touching song. Yeah, Snow is such a good song, hey yo. Absolutely. I used to sing that song all the time. On Rock Band. When <laughs> Mela knows I really can't go to the bell when someone comes to the sound. But it's killing me, I'm gonna really see all that I need to look inside. Step from the road to the sea to the sky, and I do believe that we rely on. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I remember lyrics really well. We've made that point. <laughs> We've made that point. I have OCD, so lyrics stand out in my memory. Words stand out in my memory, so I memorize them extremely well. <laughs> but other things don't, like the geography in video games, I get lost so easily. <laughs> so, that's just how OCD affects memory. Words stand out, but other things have a hard time. Well, that and the fact that I smoke so much weed also affects <laughs> other things, memory. I also, you know, no CD. Yeah, I used to impress my friends by singing all the lyrics to We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel as a teenager. They were always surprised that I could memorize all those references, all the pop culture references in that song. <laughs> the song is full filled with them. It's the whole song. <laughs> I had it on vinyl back in the day. It tells you how old I am. <laughs> 33. Turning 33 in a month. So I inherited the vinyl. <laughs> Obviously, I was born in 87. By then, by the time I was old enough to care, CDs were coming around. I remember my sister getting her first CD player when I got Sonic, and, you know, the Sega Genesis, which came with Sonic, which was the most important part. <laughs> Come 
My favorite Sega Genesis game though was Haunting Starring Culture Guy. That game was really underrated and awesome. Also had the master system as well growing up. I had pretty much every console except for Jaguar and Atari. Any Atari systems? Didn't have any Atari. But everything else, Sega CD, 32X, Radio, I, I collected it. Had to have it. Saturn, all those systems that other people didn't really bother to collect. Dreamcast, obviously the ones that were more popular like PlayStation and 64. I, I spent a lot of time on the 3DO, maybe more time than the PlayStation. 3DO was special to me. Had the original Alone in the Dark on there. <laughs> okay, I need to take out this thing that keeps healing him. There we go. Mech time. Take him out faster than he can be healed. <laughs> yes, I was. There we go. Shields back up. Right? More smack this time. Oh. <laughs> AI still my kill. I'll never my second man. AI, you still my kill. You better revive me. <laughs> Yelling at the AI for a stolen kill. Definitely a low point. <laughs>
Oh, and I was naming off all the really good Red Hot Chili Peppers songs. I forgot to mention their cover Close of Roller here. Coaster of Love that they did for the Beavis and, and Butthead to America soundtrack. That was pretty good, even though, of course, it was a cover of another song. It wasn't really their song, but still, it was good. It was a good song. And I saw Beavis and Butthead do America in the theaters. It's quite a good movie. In all hours of the day and night. Kind of a nightmare, honestly. Looking forward to the new Bill and Ted film. It's supposed to come out in August. Which is when my birthday is, so. It would be a nice a birthday trouble. present to have a good Bill and Ted trouble? sequel. Finding trouble or causing it. May the six storms protect you. Ugh, oh, he's right. I should check on my apprentice. Ava, are you still guarding the library? Maya! Hey! Yes, I am definitely at the library. Because you told me to stay there. Here? Because it's where I still am. Uh, that was a book. Gotta go by. Ugh. Keeping Ava in one place is like holding on to Quicksilver. But that's why I took her in. Either she was going to get herself killed, or maybe I could train her to, you know, survive. Attention, Maximus! Step trot! Surrender the fault key fragment immediately. We're going to downsize your stupidly serene planet. That means we're going to blow it up. God, I love this company. Farm and function. the way, Maya. Hell yeah, Vault Hunter. If you'd been around when the invasion started, we just might have held our own. Now ring the bell. I'm getting ding, some ding. to get into the <laughs> anchor hold. It'll amp up my siren powers. On an extremely related note, how do you feel about grave robbing? I've done worse. A lot worse, like seriously. Good. There's some iridium hidden in the cemetery. Something tells me Ava's already there. She'll help you out. I've never actually been inside the anchor hold. It's got iridium protections around it, but I think I can get around them. There's a passage in my book of ancient siren techniques. I'm gonna go grab it, since the library's unprotected. And I'll catch up with you later. So he's punching the wall. This person, I believe, is dead. This one's looking over her. Her hand is going through her skirt in an unusual fashion. 
Not sure what that's about. <laughs> Was a thing. Thank you so much for the follow, Kobe Streamline. That was super awesome. Super appreciated. I hope you're having an awesome day. And if you're not, I hope it gets a little more awesome soon. Hey. We're having an awesome morning. Speaking of bed, I'll probably be up for about half hour or so more before I get some sleep. Cool if I take this. Thanks. Later. like Maya used to be? Go on adventures, save the universe, kill bad guys? Yeah, I get to kill bad guys pretty much all the time. It's great. Yes! That's so freaking cool, I want to die instantly. I'm gonna be a vault hunter too. Or I would be if Maya assigned me more than just guarding a dusty-ass library and staring at water for like a hundred hours. Sorry, just really boring around here. So, we're gonna loot this graveyard or what? What you got, Gate? Nothing, bitch! You got nothing! Come on. Oh, crap! Attention, everyone! This is Captain Trunch! Those monks are in that spooky graveyard! Wipe them out and make me proud! Then we'll go on to the source! Come, Dr. Trunch! Come get some!
can open this tomb up, no sweat. What you got, tomb? You got nothing. <laughs> I like her enthusiasm. Maya says the monks put iridium in tombs, so the dead have spending money in the afterlife. We'll pay him back later. Like, if we're not all Huh, empty. We. But I know a few more places we can try. Oh yeah, that is an awesome theme. made up for the fact that he was unmasked at that way because I kind of wish he always had the mask because the mask gave him a certain unstoppable look and appeal. It felt like he was unstoppable back then. Like, he was really hard to knock down and take bumps easy. And hit him with a huge move to get him on the map back then. For a second there, I think I was on top of him. <laughs> or on top of the enemy in the grave. Remember when Undertaker covered Paul Bearer in the cement? It was such a weird Great American Bash. That was a weird one. They actually had a behind the scenes video of that on YouTube where you can watch an the first single ball. Covering Paul Bear and Cement scene. That was kinda cool. Not sure who leaked it out, but when I found it, I was like, oh that's awesome. It was sad when they did the whole cement grave for Paul Bearer because it meant you weren't going to see Paul Bearer anymore and Paul Bearer was always awesome. Rest in peace Paul Bearer because he did die in real life. And not just a story in that map. Super sweet Kim Car. I got this one. Ah, oh, it's sticky. Why? Why is it sticky? Oh, monks are so weird.
Yeah, Slow Chemical was a good song. Sure. I always like the first Chris Jericho theme, the very first. When he first appeared and had that little extra bit in the beginning. <laughs> It was only like 5 seconds extra or 10 seconds extra, but that extra bit in the beginning just made it so much better. It's definitely rock and sock. <laughs> but I also really liked Teal Rock before the rock and sock when he was beaten up on Mick Foley and when he threw Stone Cold Steve Austin off the, the bridge. <laughs> When he threw him off of that little area and threw him into the water, that was that was pretty crazy back then. <laughs> it was good, good TV. And threw the belt in after him. I definitely feel like old school heel rock was my favorite. I was so good at being a heel. But Rock and Sock was good too. Definitely still better than Hollywood Rock. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that most of your friends don't like him. Yeah, I'm always up for talking about wrestling. One time I'd made my own little homemade ring out of the ring that you could get in the 90s, but modified a bit. I used a gray shirt so that the mat would have like a fabric texture, and underneath that I put the car little cardboard placard like what you get out of a calendar. I put two of those, but in between those I had the little pieces of plastic cage that you would normally have as part of the ring assembly. and. Just the way that that all mixed together, it created a nice little bounce in the ring, and it made a great sound when the wrestling figures would hit the ring, and I'd make my own little shows. <laughs> I had my own little title belts for it that I put my little stickers over for my own little letters. It was ICW for Independent Championship Wrestling, because I couldn't come up with anything creative. <laughs> I wasn't that creative. But I did have little storylines I'd do from day to day back then. I played with wrestling figures for well up into my teenage years. <laughs> it's a nice bit of therapy. Nice creative outlet. had the ones where the bottom of the wrestling figure's feet would trigger the theme songs. You'd have to get the little Titantron set that would play the song. And they had these little metal pieces at the bottom of their feet that would just trigger the theme song when they walked through the little Titantron. Wrestling buddies, yeah, I remember those too. I remember a lot of crazy merchandising. They had this Mick Foley, like, ground meat stuff that was just, it was supposed to be some type of beef mixture that was just shredded beef. We still have your DDP one? Awesome. <laughs> I had the little figures that their little limbs would make a little snapping sound. Like if you bent them just right. <laughs> their elbow joints and their knee joints and stuff would make a little snap. Those are really nice and flexible. But yeah, that Mick Foley shredded meat was one of the weirdest merchandising from back then. I also have a little tiger game little Undertaker one. <laughs> one of those little LCD games you put the batteries in the back and 
<laughs> bang bang, yeah, McFully's Cactus Jack years were insane. Whenever he'd bring out Cactus Jack, you knew stuff was gonna get crazy. Not sure where the entrance to this place is. It just has to collect oh, iridium. And... Iridium oh, tomorrow. okay. It's right there. I'm so silly. <laughs> just right there in the ground. I thought there was a building I was supposed to go in, but the park was above her head. Until I've been up a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even get my midday nap that I usually get. And yet I'm actually more energetic than when I do get the nap. So. Skip the midday nap. Bring it on! Beyonce's giving me a look. It's like, ah! <laughs> <You're> done! <laughs> done! Need going out! Opening up a finely aged cask of bags. Come get it. Finely aged cask of whippets. I was sad that I never got to see Stoke Cole wrestle in person. Just on TV. Back then they didn't really come to my area. The only ones that did come to my area where I lived back then were WCW, and they were competing with WWE, and I refused to watch WCW back then. Ava, I was such a hardcore WWE fan. Nowadays, I've watched, you know, both. Uh, WWE Network, and before that, WWE Classics, which they had on cable, which was just a select group of content every month. Not as much selection as the network, or even near as much selection. <laughs> to get him to hear his phrases. Nowadays, his phrases would be like, Bye, DDP Yoga. <laughs> yeah. I looked into the whole DDP Yoga thing at one time. Pretty expensive, but looked interesting. All the way back here. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. Last respawn point was miles back. The scene on Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Go ahead and scream. We're miles from where anyone can hear you. By reload time. Oh, 
I never got any of those, sadly. I would love to have had one of them. Thank you so much for the follow, Obeyed Lion 13. That is super awesome. Super appreciated. Hope you're having an awesome day, and if you're not, hope it gets a little more awesome soon. But if I could have had one of those little wrestling buddies that you snuggled while you slept, probably the Undertaker. Undertaker would protect you while you sleep. <laughs> Undertaker's got your back. <laughs> Imagine Undertaker just standing there watching you sleep like Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. That'd be creepy. eBay. <laughs> 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 it's been so many years that you see eBay. Get so much stuff on Amazon now. Yeah, I should check eBay more often. I'm just spoiled by prime shipping, I think. I gotta get everything in two days. <laughs> two days. I definitely need a nap because I'm playing like crap. Hey, that rhyme. <laughs> that and I've been up for the entire night. Sun is up now. Here on the East Coast. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something if these troops just spawn indefinitely and <laughs> I've just been wasting my time fighting them the entire time? Hmm. Hmm. Let's check the map just to be sure. Well, 
You will someday. Let's drop some stuff I don't need. Wait. The only time I'm not carrying this is when I'm asleep. Did you sneak into my room? Oh, no. I found it in a bird's nest. Hey, who's Myriad? I have no idea. Where do you hear that? You were saying it in your sleep. Which you heard from the bird's nest. Crap. There, now I've killed them all, and it's very lonely here now. <laughs> the brawn panties matches. Yeah, I that was interesting. <laughs> games. That games kill the That'd be awesome. Buried Alive was always awesome. I liked Undertaker versus Stone Cold Buried Alive match. That was really good. And definitely a fun game type as well. Had a little mini game that you had to do to drop them in the casket. If they were more weakened, you could do it. <coughs> yeah, the Undertaker versus Stone Cold Buried Alive match was pretty awesome first time. <laughs> I love those little gimmicky matches. Except for, of course, the Kendall in a Cell match. Nobody likes that one. <laughs> I did see the Kendall in a Cell match live on TV. It was such a silly match. A disappointment, but it was based on such a really disturbing storyline of Alsto being fed his own dog and all that stuff. That was, <laughs> it was a storyline that was going places. Really didn't need to go. <laughs> Really would have been better if they didn't go there. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> but when they actually had the pay-per-view match, instead of the dogs being like a threat to the wrestlers, they were just humping outside the cell. <laughs> and what would anybody expect that they were gonna let the dogs tear the wrestlers apart? It was it was a weird match type even on paper. <laughs> Go into mech mode. Wow, it took that long just to get his shield down. <laughs> Oh, hey, man.
obviously if anybody's less annoying than Paul Heyman. <laughs> Especially when they put Paul Heyman on commentary, it's never good. <laughs> Got a few pay-per-views like that that are quite annoying because of it. Oh, I was right there to get my second win. I was went behind that little alcove and made it difficult fudge. That was so close. <coughs> now I've got to start the whole health bar all over again. <laughs> uh, this time I'll take the shield out without the mech and use the mech for everything else. Go in reverse. This must be their spawn that I'm... <laughs> That's funny. I was wondering why I was seeing so many assault figures. Their spawn. I also switched to the mech now. I need a little more than just my hand weapons now. <laughs> My health had gone down pretty far. I got that back. Oh, was his name Tront? You got the iridium? Give it here. <laughs> Dancing now.
This mech lasts forever. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Why is it that it lasts forever when I don't need it to last forever? <laughs> Anyways, let's get this iridium to my... I must not question teaching. She's been waiting on it for a while. Actually, let's make her wait another second while I spend my point there. Only we were allowed to raise arms against our oppressors. Concentrate. Malawan troops could be just around uh -oh. the corner. Well, Malawan's still occupying Athenus, but at least the fragment's safe. That's gonna have to be good enough for now. There it goes. <laughs> The option to give it I've to her disappeared for a second. The way Lilith Got does, but I found a technique in this book that might change that. <laughs> okay, here goes something. It's it's working. Holy crap! I feel like I could phase lock a planet right now. Teach me that right now. Oh, I could get used to that kind of power. Okay, let's get the key fragment, Vault Hunter. So, Ava, you survived the invasion. Guess all those hours staring at water taught you something after all. <laughs> I can handle myself. I learned to fight way before I met you. Let's spar then, kid. Oh, you know, I would, but I've got a loot to sort through. Nope. Go pack a bag. You get your wish. We're leaving with the Vault Hunter. Boy, for real? I mean, yeah, cool, whatever. Could be fun. I'll grab my stuff. Vault Hunter, check this out. The Iridians left messages like these all over the galaxy. I always figured there was a connection between sirens and vaults. I can't read it, but it must mean something. Loot! Check! <laughs> Just go into my back suit for no reason. This relic's been here since before I was born. But as long as Malawan knows it's here, Athenus will never be safe. I should tell you this before I explain it to Lilith. The real reason I took Ava on as an apprentice, she's going to be a siren someday. And I want to make sure she's ready when that happens. See you up in the stars, Vault Hunter. Return to Sanctuary. Unable to activate point of interest. Probably oh, because I've been here. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Just couldn't fast travel the Mac. That'd be funny if I could.
where to vault key fragment. Bring it to me. I shall keep it safe while you gallivant around in search of the other pieces. Hello? Any adults you? Hey, hot stuff. Got a proposition for you, provided you're a little bit of an exhibitionist. You in? Full disclosure, we used to date. After I left, he joined the Children of the Vault. A cult of mindless followers must have been a magnet for an insecure nothing like Killavolt. You still working on that little thing of ours? Let's see another side quest somewhere. Must be up above. Yep, up above. vault key. Why the Iridian split the keys into fragments is anyone's guess, but the vault key on Pandora required three pieces. Still, it's a start. You should return to Lilith. I'm sure she and Maya have a lot of catching up to do, or whatever it is people with social lives do. No, thank you. Give me a sterile room full of surgical equipment any day. Okay. Borderland Science. You found my citizen science machine. I created it to prove myself the smartest organism in the six galaxies, in hopes that that title would diminish the existential terror and self-hatred that plagues my every waking moment. It did not. Feel free to plug it back in and take a shot at the champ, as it were. Hmm. Curious. <laughs> hey, folks. This is Mayim Bialik, actor, PhD scientist, researcher, and your favorite <laughs> person. Today, I'm here to talk to you about video games and science, and how we can grab both by their necks and make them kiss, consensually. Long story short, by playing Borderlands 3, you can contribute to real-world scientific research, as in data that helps real people in meat space. Speaking of meat, did you know that more than half the cells in our bodies are alien? Only 43% of our cells are of human origin. The rest belong to foreign microbes. These microbes have a massive impact on our body's health. The more we study microbes, the more we can learn about the accumulation of meat and existential terror that is the human body. These microbes are made up of DNA, just like us. Each microbe has its own special DNA signature, and similar species of microbes have similar DNA. If we could sequence all the different species of microbes found in the human body, which, remember, make up more than half of the cells in our body, we'd learn a ton about ourselves. To that end, the Microseta Initiative collected tens of thousands of samples of, to use the scientific term, doo-doo, extracted the DNA of the microbes inside, and sequenced it. Now we just need to organize this data. Unfortunately, though computers excel at certain tasks, like crunching numbers or tracking down specific pornography, they're not so good at organizing DNA information. See, different species of microbes have similar, but not quite identical DNA. That means mapping their sequences can be kind of ambiguous. The computer makes lots of small mistakes that can corrupt downstream analysis. Which brings us back to video games. So we've got several million sequences that are each 150 nucleotides long that are riddled with small errors from the computer analysis. How can we get rid of all these errors? With your help. 
We've taken the millions of DNA sequences and broken them down into bite-sized puzzles that you can play and solve inside Borderlands 3. And try not to think about the fact that the DNA came from human excrement when I use phrases like bite-sized. By playing Borderlands Science inside Borderlands 3, you'll be directly helping our scientists organize and compare this dung data. The game is simple. You'll be confronted with different strands of DNA, each made up of individual tiles. It's your job to place as many of these tiles as possible in their appropriate row while matching the colors. It's not always possible to line everything up perfectly, but that's okay. By playing the game and matching the sequences, you'll also be identifying the errors in our computer analysis and helping scientists across the planet build a better algorithm for the future. And since all this research is open access, the entire scientific community will benefit from it. This research could directly lead to a universal catalog of all known microbes, which could lead to new breakthroughs in food, medicine, exercise, the sky's the limit. And it all starts with you playing a video game. But if the pursuit of knowledge isn't enough of an encouragement to sort through virtual butt microbes, then fear not. Playing Borderlands Science earns you in-game currency you can spend on booster items for your characters. Oh, and this is all totally free. Just activate the Borderlands Science machine on Sanctuary 3 and sort some gut microbes. Okay. <laughs> That's a thing. To get good and return to this cabinet in an effort to beat my top score. Please feel free. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet, Kim Carr. <laughs> Meow. Mind if I practice? I need to get talk? some sleep. I have been up this weather we're having. all night. Please don't respond. I truly don't care. I've had no naps. <laughs> so I want to thank everyone for stopping by. Thanks for the bits, the follows, the subs. But most importantly of all, thanks for hanging out because I love you all. You're my Twitch fam. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Later tonight, in fact. Have a good night, everybody.